my hometown. We are interviewing Victor Khaleesi, who is the commissioner for the mayor's office of people with disabilities in New York City. Welcome, Victor. Well, oh, thank you for asking, Judy. You are a New Yorker, right? Oh, can't you tell by my voice? <laughs> totally. Victor, um, when did you acquire your disability? I acquired my disability in 1994, the, the year the New York Rangers won the Stanley Cup. How old were you? I was 22 years old. So at that point in time, had you been very active in sports? Oh yeah, I grew up playing baseball on the streets of uh, New York City and uh, roller skating on the streets of uh, New York City. So playing roller hockey. So yeah, I was really involved in sports. So after you um, acquired your disability, what was your thought about how you would be able to continue to be involved in sports? I did. I did. What I did think about was wheelchair basketball. I wasn't good at playing basketball standing up and I sure wasn't going to be that good sitting down. And I really thought my life was over and I didn't think I'd ever excel or play sports in the capacity that I used to. So you like challenges. It's all about the challenge. So if you take that period in time when you acquired your disability and bring it forward to today, um, tell me what inspires you about challenge. The fact that people say you can't do something, I think that's a challenge. Uh, I think it's self too, realizing that I have an obstacle and I have to overcome it, show that I can be the best that I can be. And competition, people are out there to compete against. And I, and I think competition drives a, lot, uh, drives a lot of people, and it certainly does for me. So being the commissioner, and you've been the commissioner now through two mayors, Mayor Bloomberg and Mayor de Blasio. That is correct. What have been some of your biggest challenges? And give us a few examples of what you've been able to do to address those challenges. Sure. I, I think when I first got involved in government, I really care about outdoor spaces. Like you said, we're here in Brooklyn Bridge Park. Great space. But I wanted to ensure that parks were accessible for people with disabilities. So I think that was my first challenge with the city, is to really get involved. And I got involved in the NYC 2012 Olympic Paralympic bid, and I met the Parks Commissioner, and I simply told him I want to make parks accessible for people with disabilities. He recruited me, and lo and behold, I had an opportunity to change a park system. And if we think about New York City parks, we're one of the biggest park systems in the country, and not the world. We have 29,000 acres of parks, 17 miles of beaches, 35 recreation centers, 1,000 playgrounds, 500 large parks and small parks, 668 bathrooms. We know because people with disabilities need accessible bathrooms. So it was a challenge and figuring out how we do that. And I started off with making beaches accessible, rolling down mats so people with disabilities can get on the beaches, looking at bathrooms and reconfiguring them in a certain way, and then really thinking about how we look at parks and our design and construction phase and how we make sure that when we're planning and implementing, we're building it for accessibility. And not just the standards, Judy, about going over and beyond, because that's what it's about. So when we think about accessibility, we are frequently thinking about it for people who have physical disabilities. Yep. How have you built in some of the other requirements to enable all people with various disabilities to be able to participate? As the example in arts. So a um, great example is when we're building playgrounds, we're really thinking about those quiet spaces for people with autism because they need to, sometimes all this noise that we hear around our city is really a little too much for some people with autism. So we want to build quiet, quiet spaces. We know some people can't ambulate as well as they can as others. So we want to make sure that we build accessible swings that they can use properly. We want to think about color contrast in our parks so people with visual disabilities can enjoy and feel that and think of uh, sounds that are happening. So we really think holistically in that. And maybe being able to make sure a person can move through the space, because a lot of playground designs, what we see is you go up one ramp, come down the same ramp, and every other kid gets to to go through the park and um, not be able to uh, uh, to experience it all. So we want a kid, be a kid with a disability or a parent with a disability or a grandparent with a disability to be able to move through the space just like everyone else. How have you been working with young people, disabled and non-disabled, in your job, and what are some So if I think about all the advocates in New York City, uh, there are mostly older um, generation of people that come through that have fought an infrastructure that is just wasn't built for them. People that are growing up today, the ADA is so readily available, they can get on a bus, they can get in a train, they can get in a wheelchair accessible taxi. That never existed in some of this old generation. So they really need to reinvent themselves and think about, hey, accessibility matters and I need that in every aspect of my life. They need to get involved. They need to get involved in the process from start to finish because
because otherwise we're going to be left behind. A great example is if the infrastructure that they're building now and this digital infrastructure. It cannot leave us behind. And I see signs of it. And I, I'm fighting that and saying, hey, we're building an infrastructure. We got left behind in the 1900s. We're not getting left behind now. No generation needs to know. They need to be involved now. So what are you doing in the city to help address this issue? Great question. Um, the mayor has just released a new initiative called Democracy NYC. And it's to really engage youth and to really talk about, hey, this is your voting rights, right? You want something done in your school, you want something done in your neighborhood, you need to you need to democracy. Get, get into democracy and really use it to your advantage. So we are pushing an initiative to ensure that includes people with disabilities and talk about the disability issues, specific issues that are there and how they need to be addressed in every aspect, from school to everyday life. If someone were to come on, I hope you do, to the website to learn about coming to New York and visiting New York, um, what would they find about your website? So are they accessible? Oh, of course. Our website, uh, that's one of the initiatives we've been really cognizant of, is really digital accessibility. And a lot of people are driven towards digital accessibility. So we have built guidelines of digital accessibility in New York City, how to make social media accessible. We have people looking at every website, every link, every picture, every attachment to ensure accessibility is being met. And on top of that, we're making sure that our new platforms that are coming out are going over and beyond accessibility. How are you working with other commissioners in major cities, commissioners for offices on people with disabilities? It's integral to work with those commissioners in other cities because they're having the same problems we're having and we're able to bounce ideas off each other and we're able to figure out what works and what doesn't work, those best practices. So we've been really meeting every other month and with people from Chicago, Los Angeles, Philadelphia, Texas, Texas, of course, yeah, of course, we got Houston, we got Austin that are in there, we, we have um, San Francisco, San Francisco. Boston, yeah. yeah, so it's really um, big major cities, and what's your problem, what you're going, and what are you doing, and we're all finding the same issue, right, problem with our civil rights movement, it comes with a price tag, it's a price tag to add that rank, a price tag to be able to add those wheelchair accessible taxes, and we have to figure out creative ways to go beyond that, and really think about true civil rights, and that's full inclusion. So, what is one accomplishment that you feel most proud about in your position? I know it's a crazy question, but... Well, we have lots of them. Um, if, I, if I could pinpoint one, uh, I'm going to focus on transportation. We have a rich infrastructure of transportation here in New York City. And we have buses, we have subways, we have taxis, and now we have um, ferries. So, one of the things that we've been able to accomplish is making our taxis accessible. Every other city's been grappling with this problem throughout the United States, and we were able to institute 50% um, wheelchair accessible taxis by the year 2020. And what does that really mean? That's about 6,000 wheelchair accessible taxis that, are on, that will be on the street by 2020. Really great achievement, and we also want to make sure people have access to that. So we do that through app-based systems that, that people can book it on an app, they can book it on a website, people can actually call because we know everyone doesn't have a cell phone. And along with that, again, uh, transportation, we, uh, the mayor has committed to having transportation ferries that go all the way from the Rockaways to the Bronx. And we've included accessibility in there, making sure that wheelchair accessible bathrooms, making sure people can get it on and off, captioning and everything, ticket machines that are accessible. So we're really proud of our transportation increasing that. We have to go beyond that. And we're really excited to know that there is a new president in town for the uh, Mass Transit Authority that's run by the state in New York, in New York State. And he is really committed as one of his pillars of including accessibility. And we're all over that working with the state to ensure accessibility is being met. The subways need to be accessible. So thank you very much, Victor. Unfortunately, this is the end of our discussion. No, I love you, Judy. <laughs> and we're going to go and show you some parts of the park. And I'm going to conclude by saying we're going to look at the Brooklyn Bridge. I went across the Brooklyn Bridge in the 1960s when I was a student at Long Island University and we had a demonstration. The bridge was not accessible. My friends had to carry my wheelchair up all the stairs going across the bridge. Today, the bridge is accessible, so I encourage you to come to New York, walk across the Brooklyn Bridge. I know it's an older city and there are areas that are not as accessible, but it is a vibrant place. And welcome to New York.